It's my world, a world where the night is never just night, and every shadow tells a story. The city never sleeps, and neither do the secrets that slither through its shadowy alleys. It was a night thick with fog, the kind that clings to your coat like a desperate dame. The rain was a bitter cocktail of boredom, misery, and loneliness. It swept through the city's corridors, urging the sleepless to take the asylum. I found myself looking down the one-way street of another late night. Time was a set of doors. One led to a world where it was too late to go grab a beer, and through the other, too early for the morning paper. I was stuck in a purgatory, supervised by the smug-faced clock hanging above my office door, a glass of bourbon keeping me company with a stack of unpaid bills. The neon sign outside flashed a sordid dance of blues and reds across the room, painting the scene like a Picasso in his blue period. The words private investigator were etched in the glass door pane, the name underneath faded from memory. They call me Michael Corvasto, private eye. I've seen things that would make a preacher swear and a convict pray. From day one on the search for aliens, finding out the size of Twinkies got smaller, it was totes not cool. The door creaked open, she walked in, legs first, a silhouette cut from midnight velvet. Her eyes held the promise of trouble, the kind I knew all too well, the kind that paid the bills but never came cheap. Mr. K? Her voice was a melody that could turn saints into sinners. I tipped my hat. The one and only. What's got you wandering through the devil's playground out of this hour? She took a breath, and the story began. Another chapter in this city's endless book of heartache and crime. And me? I'm just the sap who writes it down. She perched on the edge of the chair across my desk, her clothes hugging her like a lover's whisper. She described to me a mysterious man, her voice trembling like a leaf in the storm, a mole man to be exact. He killed my family, she shrieked. I leaned back, the chair groaning under the weight of the world. I told her I'd never heard of this before. She pulled out a photograph, a snapshot of happier times. He was last seen at the Centaur Lounge, the jazz joint down on Fifth and Vine. He plays the piano, or he used to, before. Before what, I prodded, sensing the plot thickening like blood in the cold water. Before he got mixed up with the wrong crowd, the gamblers, thugs, the kind of people who'd sell their own mother for a slice of pie, she said. They changed him, turned him evil. I took the photo, our fingers brushing, a jolt of electricity in the gloom. I'll take the case, I said, already feeling the familiar itch of intrigue and danger. But I warned her what I might find might not play the tune she would want to hear. She nodded, a tear escaping down her cheek. Just find him, Mr. K, please. The door closed behind her, leaving nothing but the scent of jasmine and a mystery to unravel. I grabbed my coat and hat, ready to dive headfirst into the belly of the beast. The Centaur Lounge was calling my name, and I had a feeling this case was going to be a doozy. The Centaur Lounge was a joint where the drinks were stiff and the jazz was smooth. I pushed through the door, the sound of piano wailing like a siren's call. The air was thick with smoke and secrets, and every shadow seemed to whisper a different lie. I made my way over to the bar, the bartender giving me the once over. What'll it be, he grunted, polishing a glass with a rag that had seen better days. Information, I said, sliding a crisp bill across the mahogany. I'm looking for a mole man. Goes by the name of Omar White. Ring any bells? He pocketed the bell, his eyes narrowing. Might do, he said. Omar's been hanging out here for years, but he ain't been around the last couple weeks. Word is he got caught by Big Miko's crew and they made him into a killer. I heard he killed about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd people. Big Miko. That name was like a bad penny. Always turning up. I thanked the bartender and turned to leave, but a voice stopped me cold. You're Corvasto, right? The detective? I turn around to see a man in a booth. A man with really nice hair, but a strangeness, a sort of funniness to him. Who's asking? I said. Let's just say, I can help you take out this crook. He smirked at me. Okay. He was the most meekalicious man I've ever seen. So we made a deal. Tomorrow at sundown, we tranquilize and bring me my mole man.
sing as a song, a song to keep us warm. There's such a chill, such a chill. Einstein was right. Time is relative to the observer. When you're looking down the barrel of the gun, time slows down. Your whole life flashes by in heartbreaking scars. Stay with it. You can live a lifetime in that split second. There was no glory in this. I hadn't asked for this crap. Trouble had just come to me. Big dark swarms. The good and the just, they were like gold dust in the city. I had no illusions. I was not one of them. I was no hero. Just me and the gun and the crook. My options had decreased to a singular course. Or so I thought. I lowered the gun. The city held its breath. The scales trembled. And for a moment, just a moment, redemption hung in the balance. And that, my friend, is where the story ends. Because sometimes, even in the darkest alleys, there's a glimmer of hope. And sometimes, just sometimes, a private eye can change the tune of fate.